Right, you've just been through some situations where you found a range of numbers for your answer instead of just one answer. So what we're going to be doing is looking at how do you represent those problems. Um, just a couple examples, you guys were talking about how much money do you have to spend on grammar, where you could spend $20 or $19.90 or two pennies if you wanted to, or $15.32. So how do you represent that answer without just writing down all of the actual numbers that might work? So what we're going to focus on today is graphing a linear inequality. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to graph a linear equality in one variable. All right, we're going to start first of all with an inequalities cheat sheet. I know that you know these, but it's really easy to forget which one is which. It's easy to get them mixed up. So we're just going to make sure that you don't. This first sign here is a less than sign. And this one you'll notice is just like it, but there's an equal sign underneath it. So this one will be less than or equal to. This one down here is a greater than sign. And then this one down here is, there's just an equal sign underneath it, so it will be greater than or equal to. So it can either be greater than the number or it can be equal to it. All right, um, mostly you just need to memorize these. I like to look at this as, it kind of looks like an L, so I think of that as less than, but other than that, just try to memorize it. Okay, what we're going to be doing now is actually looking at some different problems um, where we actually have more than one answer and how do I make it look, why do we graph it and how do we make it look. So this first one I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, I think I'll put a five there. Okay, what I'm looking at for this, it says X is less than five. So what I'm trying to do is think of all the numbers that are less than five. So um, let's see, two is less than five, one is less than five, um, negative 8 is less than 5, negative 50 is less than 5, and I could keep going on and on and on probably forever. I, could, I would never run out of choices. So what we want to try to do is graph it to show all of the choices that would work in this problem. So I'm going to start at 5, okay, and I'm just going to start looking at all the numbers. 2, which would be over here, i put 4 and a 6 here. 4 is definitely less than 5, 3 is less than 5, 2 is less than 5, 1 is less than 5, 1.5, blah, 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 we could keep going and going and going. So you notice all these numbers over here, well actually 4.8, 4.5, they're all less than five also. So the way that we're going to represent that is with a graph, it's just a shaded in area, all of these numbers are less than five. Okay, now let's take a look specifically at five. Is five less than five? And the answer is no. So at five, we're going to put an open circle to show that five is not an answer. We're not including it in our solution. So again, this is just a way of representing more than one answer to a problem, right? Just a couple cheats for you on this one. First of all, there was no equal sign on this less than symbol. There's no like little equal bar under there. So if there is no equal sign, we know we're going to have an open circle, okay? The other cheat thing that we can look at, this sign in the problem, and this sign on my answer will always match each other. So that's how you can tell if you graphed it correctly. Okay, let's take a look at another one, number two. I have x is greater than or equal to negative five. So I want to think of all the numbers that are either greater than or equal to negative five. Well, first of all, I know that five is equal to negative five, so because of that, so I, I do get to include it. Um, zero is, 1 is, 8 is, 100 is, 5,000 is. So again, we're going to draw a graph to represent um, which numbers that would be. So first of all, we'll start at negative 5. We did decide that negative 5 is an answer, so I'm going to put a closed in circle to show that yes, we are including negative 5 in our solution. And then you'll notice 0 is an answer, so let's put a few numbers on to the left and the right of those. Um, negative 4 is bigger. Um, if zero is over here somewhere, it's bigger. One is bigger, eight, 100, 5,000. So all the numbers over on this right side of the graph are bigger than negative five. So again, we're going to, that's how we're going to represent our solution. Okay, and then a couple things we look at. There was an equal sign, which means we do get to include, whoops, yes, there is an equal sign. We get to include it in our solution. Okay, and then the other thing is if you look at this greater than sign right here, it does match the greater than sign of my answer. And again, that will always work. Okay, let's take a look at number three. We're going to put a two here. 
Okay, you'll notice on this one it's a little bit different because on these ones the variable was on the left and this one the variable is on the right. So although you could graph it and sometimes you might get the right answer when you do this, it's a lot easier if we have the variable on the left side. So we're going to do a little switcheroo here. So we're going to take the n and put it on the left and we're going to put a 2 and put it on the right. But in order for us to legally do that, we then also have to switch the sign in the middle. So the less than sign now has to become a greater than sign. And notice I really haven't changed anything. The pointy part is towards the 2. The pointy part is still towards the 2. So now I'm ready to graph it. So I need to think of all the numbers that are bigger than 2. So I'm going to start at 2, put a couple numbers to either side. I don't get to include 2 because there's no equal sign. So it's not a part of my answer. And then I need all the numbers that are bigger than 2, which would be all the numbers that are to the right of 2. And again, if I check, this sign here matches this sign. So I'm good to go. All right, negative 2 is less than or equal to m. All right, this time I would like you to pause the video, try the answer, and then come back and check it to see if you're right. Okay, once again, we're going to do a switcheroo. And we're going to put the m on the left and the negative 2 on the right. And then since I switched it, I do also have to switch the sign in the middle. So we'll make this a less than or equal to sign. And I am now ready to graph. So negative 2 goes in the middle. Let's put a couple numbers on either side. Negative 2 will be closed in because it is, there is an equal sign down here, which means I get to include it in my answer. And then less than negative 2 would be all the numbers to the left of negative 2. All right, so hopefully you did a nice job on that one. All right, we're going to look at a couple situations to find out a special rule that we're going to have to follow when we start solving equations. When If I have 4 is less than 6, you'll notice in each one, um, 4 is less than 6 is a true statement. It's 4 is less than 6. So what we're going to do now is just do a couple things with this to see if we still get a true statement. Let's say I decide to multiply both sides of that inequality by 2. And remember with equations, as long as we do something to both sides, we're allowed to do that. So notice when I do that, on the left side I get 8, and then I have my less than sign, and then on the right side I'll get 12. My question would be, do I still have a true statement? 8 is less than 12? Yes, 8 is less than 12. So it was totally okay for me to do that, and I still get a true statement. Okay, let's try if instead if I multiplied by negative 2. Okay, if I took negative 2 times 4, I'm going to get negative 8 and bring down my less than sign. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. And then this time, notice, eight, negative 8 is not less than negative 12. Actually, negative 8 is bigger than negative 12. So this is a false statement. Okay, so it, we're not allowed to just multiply by negative 2. All right, let's say if we divided by 2. All right, so let's just do, we'll get 2 is less than 3. And is 2 less than 3? Yep, I once again get a true statement. And then let's this time divide by negative 2. So 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. And then less than 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. Is negative 2 less than negative 3? No, it's bigger than negative 3. So this once again is a false statement. So you'll notice these two, if I do that, I don't get an answer that's even right. So if I want to make them right, what I would need to do is change the way that the inequality is going. And that brings us to our special rule. And the special rule is when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must change the direction of the inequality. Okay, so we'll just we'll have to remember that when we actually get into solving, which we are going to be doing in the next video. But hopefully now you can graph a linear inequality.